when you're a goth and you're just getting started, you just, you naturally seek out other goths. And it makes sense, right? When something is such a big part of who you are and it's so important to you, why wouldn't you want to seek other people out who are like yourself? When I was young and I was exploring at the time, the internet was just, it was a dead end when it came to anything goth related. Even when it came to things that were super mainstream, it was really primitive. And we're talking like 94, 95. So I was sort of fortunate where I came up with other people who were kind of going goth at the same time. We were alternative and we slowly became interested in goth. So whatever information one person found, it kind of made its way through the group. And like I said, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. We didn't have anything like that. But what we did have was each other. We would go out and explore. We would read the goth magazines, any local goth scenes. We would go to any local alternative stores, record stores, and we would pick up flyers and club passes. This eventually led us to goth nights, goth clubs, goth events. And this was really the epicenter of everything. And this is where you kind of grew into the person that you were. And I know a lot of people who've not been to goth clubs or really don't know much about them, they kind of view it as another club. Just a regular club, just like any other club, and it's really not. There's a lot more to it than that. This is where you would integrate with other goths. This is where, this is, oddly enough, this is where you learned how to behave. And I know this sounds ridiculous. Being somebody with ADHD, I learned far more. I, my vocabulary became more expansive. I became more familiar with things like classic literature, even though I don't read it myself, but I became familiar with it because of goth nights. You know, here we are, we are rubbing elbows with the elders. And one of the main things that were really important to us is we didn't want to be seen as stupid because two of the things that you want to be seen as, you want to be seen as you're there for the right reasons. You want to be legitimate and you want to be seen as intelligent and articulate. And the way that they spoke, it made us 15 year olds feel like idiots. We're still, we're early in high school and we want to impress them. So I was kind of one of the people that only really spoke when spoken to and I was a bit of a wallflower and I listened and I absorbed and I just wanted to learn everything that was going on around me because I wanted to be seen as one of the flock and I wanted to be seen as being there for the right reasons because I loved all of the music, everything I learned, everything I heard and what I really wanted to say is like, when it comes to goths nowadays, it's a little bit different. You know, when you're coming into the scene, where do they go to? They look for each other on social media. And you would think that living in an age of technology and information, they would have it made, right? They have the world at their fingertips. Anything that you possibly want, how can you get it wrong? Click up a button, there you go, right? We would have killed for this back then. Just the way that information flows so easily and the way that you can find events and music and each other and even fashion, we would have killed for this, but it was really hard for us. And now that I think about it, I think that going through what I did and having to put in all of that effort, I respect it more and I appreciate it more because when you're going through all of these different steps, and it takes you sometimes months just to come up with a CD, for example, or like a band that you found, you appreciate it that much more because you put so much work into it and the excitement that you feel when your efforts actually come to fruition and you're like, I've done it, I've done the thing. It's satisfying and you are far more appreciative than if you just went click, click, click. But that still doesn't mean that we wouldn't have killed for this. Because so much effort went into completing just the simplest of tasks back then. And even then, it didn't guarantee a reward. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say um, you discovered this new band, Corpus Delecti, because you heard one of their songs on one of the mixtapes that's making the rounds through the friends. And of course, nobody has an idea of the source. And you must have this band. You obsess over this song. The hunt is on. The hunt is real. You want to buy that album. So what does one do in 1995? First thing I would do is I would ask my friends, I would go through everybody, ask anybody who knew anybody, do you have the CD or tape? And then I would ask to tape it off of them. Second thing, record stores. Now we had two locally that weren't bad. Um, one of them was Record Connection and the other one was Record Stop. You could walk to those, they were super local. And sometimes you'd yield some pretty interesting results. I know I got, um, Sisters of Mercy, I got Christian Death, I got, um, uh, what else did I get? 
I got Lords of the New Church, I got Rosetta Stone, and I got, um, who's the other band I was thinking of? Uh, Skinny Puppy, when Process came out. I remember I skipped school that day and we went up and I went and got that CD because it was literally like right by my high school. So we walked to Record Stop and we got Skinny Puppy Process when it came out. Uh, but that was from Record Stop. But when it came to a little bit more obscure things, like for example, at the time, Corpus Delecta, you wouldn't be able to find that there. So there was a third place you can go to that was somewhat local and it was called None of the Above. And that was a little bit further, could not walk to that, and you had to find your own way. So you either had to ask one of the parents to please, please, please give you a ride. Can you please take me to none of the above? Which had a really decent obscure section, actually. They had a Gotham industrial section, and they had a decent section when it came to things like imports and stuff. And I lucked out finding some really good stuff there. You couldn't get a ride there. You could technically take a bus to the mall and then walk three miles up the road that the mall was on and then hit none of the above. And even then, you weren't guaranteed that it would be there. I'm looking for anything goth and obscure. Generation Records was far more likely to have what you're looking for. But allow me to present you with the 15-year-old in the 90s conundrum. Train fare from Ronkonkoma to Penn Station round trip. You are not even there yet and you're already eating into your very limited budget. Speaking of eating, Plan to starve the entire day because your budget only allows one thing, eating or the CD. And don't get me started on whether or not your train home lands on peak time because this is a super fun thing because if you happen to leave on peak time, they're gonna charge you extra. Even though you bought a round trip ticket, they will charge you extra just to ride the train home. But once again, I digress. Since you never went to the city by yourself, you always went with groups of friends your friends did not only want to just go to the record store. It was not like Ronkonkoma, Penn Station, go to the record store, come home. It was never as fast as that, never as easy as that. We are dealing with lots of different personalities and lots of hormones. The reality was that everybody wanted to walk around completely gothed out in an attempt to convince the city goths that we were in fact city goths as well and you were not accomplished until you felt as if you have effectively convinced the locals that you were a city goth as well because in 1995 to a 15 year old, the whole concept of being a suburban goth was lame. I burned off my breakfast just making my way out of Penn Station, let alone the 45 minute walk to the record store. At the end of the trip, at the end of the day, I got off that train like a ravenous lunatic in dire need of carbs in calories and I would beg my mother with a level of haunting that would rival the Amityville Horror House. I needed a quarter pounder with cheese combo, super sized, or I would settle for two Geno slices or I would surely die. And after all that, you might not even come home with that CD anyway because they might not have had it or it was a European import and therefore cost more money than you had. Because it's an import. All of that for nothing. <laughs> Later on, I found out about mail order, which was a little bit lengthy, a little bit pricey, and it was very labor intensive. I had to cut the little order form out from the back of the catalog, and then you had to write in the CDs that you want, and then you had to work out the price of the CD, plus the price of postage, and then you had to go to Wherever you could get a money order, you could do it at like 7-Eleven, you could do it at the post office, and then you had to get a money order. And then you had to get a stamp in an envelope, and then you had to put it in the envelope, and then you had to send it off to either Isolation Tank or Digital Underground, and wait three months sometimes just to get your stuff. I really like this band, Corpus Delecti. I'd like to know more about them, possibly order their music. Let's have a look. Huh, here's their entire discography, their history. I can listen to and download their full catalog right now. Alternatively, I could order their CDs all in the time that it takes to make toast, but I'd like to have it here right now at this very second. Click done, that's it. Did I mention we would have killed for this back then? There was just a lot of things that we knew. And when I think about where that information came from, I honestly couldn't tell you. I just know that we knew somehow. For example, a lot of people in my area knew about this Ticketmaster, where I got my Cure tickets there when I saw the Cure, and this was 
1996, I want to say. And there was a Ticketmaster located in the fitting rooms of a TJ Maxx. Now, it wasn't advertised, and there definitely was no sign over the booth that let you know it was a Ticketmaster. You would think that this is just an attendant that worked in the fitting room. But somehow, we knew there was a Ticketmaster in the fitting rooms of TJ Maxx whenever we needed concert tickets, whenever there was a line anywhere, whenever like you'd have to call and you'd be waiting on hold. We knew we would just go to the TJ Maxx in Patchogue, go in the fitting rooms, and get our tickets. I can't remember for the life of me How the hell did I know that? Who told me that? And it's stuff like that, that we just, we learned through experience. We learned through trial and error. We learned through asking other people in a time where it should be so easy to just sort of get it. How is it harder now to find anything related to goth than it was in 1995? The answer is saturation. Uh, back in the day, it was an insult to be called a freak. It was a derogatory term that was kind of a blanket term that was given to anybody that dressed outside the norm. Anyone that was alternative in any way, you're labeled a freak. Back then, the normies or the people that would refer to you as a freak, they couldn't differentiate. They didn't know the difference between a goth, a punk, a raver, an alternatine, a grunge. They had no idea. Now, everyone and their mother thinks that they are an accredited goth historian and they know anything and everything when it comes to anything related to the subculture. I've been in the scene more than 26 years now, and I still have 15 year old kids coming up to me insisting that Lil Peep is goth. by grown men who say with absolute certainty and with the utmost confidence that goth is a sexual preference and a kink and that we dress this way as a signal to show you that we're freaky in bed. I cannot tell you how many times that I've had the argument presented to me just to justify what they're saying by, well, take a look at Pornhub. Goth girl and goth is a search term. So is potato. So is stepmom. Rule 34, random people who are desperate to stand out or be edgy, trying to explain to me that Victorians and Vikings started the goth scene or crap that you have to sift through. I mean, pages and pages of just utter unrelated garbage to find anything pertaining to goth is utterly, it's astounding. In 1995, roughly 10% of Americans had the internet in their house. In 2022, Pretty much everybody in America has the internet in their pocket. I had an easier time getting hold of an obscure German import CD than a Gen Zer yesterday had just trying to figure out what goth is. The difference is that goth is everywhere and yet nowhere simultaneously because it is hashtagged within an inch of its very life. Despite its far and wide travels that it may take you when you search, it's gonna land you right back to square one. Having gotten you absolutely nowhere. If you search for goth, you're gonna find e-girls, pants, the mythical mall goth, SoundCloud rappers, goth thoughts, girls with only fans wearing goth as a costume just to sell subscriptions, symphonic metal, bullshit quizzes, influencers cashing in on the hashtag, doing nothing remotely related to the subculture. Star icons, juggalos, magazine articles, losing their absolute mind because some celebrity has worn a black bustier and suddenly she is a goth icon. You can't make this shit up. Imagine you're coming into the scene, you're a baby bat, and you're dealing with all the saturation. So naturally, you're gonna get a lot of things wrong because there's just a lot of misinformation out there and that's not necessarily the fault of the baby bat. But then you have people who are just so sick of all the saturation and all the misinformation and all the bullshit that they're dealing with and all the knock-on effects that they're dealing with by way of all this misinformation that they can come off a little bit 
too overwhelming. There's a line drawn in the sand. Off one side, not on the other. And there is no gray area. There are no nuances that squeeze people or things or music into some side crevice. They're goth or it's not, you know, simple as that. Things can get a little bit overwhelming for a baby bat when things are so aggressively policed like aggressively policing genres, all this new compartmentalization of subgenres of music. Um, I find that it becomes really counterintuitive and it can scare baby bats off. And these are genuine people who do love the music. Understandably, given the advent of all of this saturation, things can get very muddled and confusing for them. And I understand both sides. What people need to remember is that off we don't hold the patent on dark themes. You don't have to necessarily be goth because you like horror films or you like to wear black, you enjoy the macabre. We don't hold that patent. You go off and be you. You don't have to attach that label to yourself, but it's not just those things. They like the label of goth and they kind of want to pull in all of these different things that really aren't associated and that's when you get all of this policing. So like I said, I get both sides. You get people that aggressively want to protect it, but at the same time, they could be overwhelming to the baby bat. Between finding the actual goth scene and then getting it right, given all the new nuances, holy shit, does it make it so much harder for people to be goth today than it was 20, 40 years ago.